Hi there, I'm Black Bright and when I wear my glasses it means either my eyes are allergic to the eyeliner or I'm run down. So put my glasses on because I, I'm not feeling 100% but I wanted to do a quick video and I didn't want to let vanity um, get in the way. So um, today's um, video is about should England be for the English or should I say um, yeah, should England be just be for the English? Because, you know, when I'm thinking about um, immigration and the effect on on it, on the on the white English, I, it, make, it begs the question, what would England be without foreigners? And you can poo poo it all you like. It's a bit like saying, what would the world be without blacks? You know, because there'd be no stoplights, there'd be no vacuum cleaners, the list goes on. So it'd be a bit like that. England would be Morris dancing and shepherd's pie. Don't get me wrong, I love shepherd's pie. I love toad in the hole. I love bangers and mash. But I also like the touch of all these different other flavours. I love an occasional biryani. I like curry go. I like pizza sometimes. I like a spag bowl, you know, spaghetti bolognese. I like to dip into all these different flavours. And I think, you know, I think we need it because can you imagine having um, pie and chips or shepherd's pie every single day. You've only got like about five flavours. Even fish and chips come from the juice. So yeah, I think it's important to have an amalgamation of different cultures. It's just about choosing which aspect of each culture you want to be influenced by. You don't have to take on the whole thing. You can reject what you want, but people should be allowed to be individuals and embrace their own culture. So I think that's where it all goes. We don't want to lose our own culture because sometimes that's what happens. Sometimes because we've got different cultures in the world, we take a little bit from there, we take a little bit from here, and it end up in we end up being an amalgamation of different cultures, which is a bit of a shame because then we lose our identity in that sense. And you know, as a black Brit, that is typical because sometimes I don't even know who I am or where I belong. And I often think, you know, if the UK was to say, I don't want any blacks in the country, where would I fit in? I wouldn't fit in in Jamaica. Because as much as I love Jamaica and the sun and all of that, you know, I, you know, there's certain aspects of it, like the, the, the very laissez-faire attitude, you know, very laid back, you know, so, and I'm a kind of a get up and go person. You know, so sometimes there's things in, you know, in our different cultures that we have internalised and made them our own. Now, what I find is that as long as foreigners are bringing in the money to the UK, they're OK. Some of them get an OBE like Trevor McDonald. You know, some of the, I don't think any black person has ever got a. Uh, a CBE or DME because they're the highest merit, but they have been awarded OBEs and MBEs and some of them have refused it, but then again, so some white people refused it. I think there's been about 220 refusals of the honour uh, or knighthood. That, you know, hundreds of refusals. So, you know, they do highlight it like when Benjamin Zephaniah refused it. But John Lennon, he sent his back and there's a lot of people. Roald Dahl, lots of people have sent it back. Anyway, I'm not talking about CBs or OBAs. I'm just talking about as long as foreigners are in the country and they're making money, it seems to be OK. Whether they're making money through immigration fees, whether they're making money through construction and building up the country, whether they're making money through entertainment industry, you know, sports world, then they're fine. Oh, great. They're Brits. They're lovely. You know, bring them on in as long as you're making us money. But God forbid it goes tits up and they're not making any money. You know, all the fingers point on them. And then when they're not making any money, like a lot of young boys who are unable to get jobs, they fling them in prison where they can make money because they're paid by the federal federal government for every inmate that they have. 
So it's in their interest to throw um, people in prison. So they're making money off of foreigners left, right and centre. So that's fine. But why don't they make and why do they have to call them immigrants and make them make us feel like foreigners all the time or most of the time? Well, I'm not talking about, you know, your day to day people. I'm talking about the politicians and the people and the media who make us make people think that we are the problem. The 5.5 million Brits that live outside the UK they're not called immigrants by the host country, but they are immigrants. Oh, no, they get a lovely title called expatriates. You know what I mean? But there's no difference. 5.5 million in another country or in other countries, that could cause overcrowdedness. That could cause a failing economy. But they're not blamed for it. So why are we blamed for it in this country? Why is it made to look as though we're responsible for everything that's going wrong? The loss of jobs, the overcrowdedness, when, you know, it's probably due to mismanagement of funds, you know, spending too much money on military, sell, selling all the assets and, you know, letting people lose jobs, no factory jobs. You know, look how much they've sent, you know, look how much they've spent, look how much they've sold. How can they expect to sell half of the industry, half of their assets, and it not affect jobs? But that's fine. If you want to sell your industries, sell your assets, sell, spend all your money to foreign aid or military or whatever it is you're spending the money on, that's fine. But don't blame it on the immigrants and say, we're the cause of overcrowding. We're the cause of... Um, low employment we're the cause of low jobs we're not the cause of low jobs it's cause and effect if there are no jobs because you've sold off half of them you've sold off half of the factories or half of the shops i mean debenhams is going under now i mean it's been resurrected about three times but it's going down it's going under that's a loss of more jobs are you going to blame that on immigration as well when people are scrambling for more jobs and some people are prepared to take on lower job, lower paid jobs than no jobs. Are you going to blame that on the immigrants? It's not right. It's not right. You shouldn't be doing that. Anyway, I've had my little rent. I just think that, you know, we can benefit from this amalgamation of cultures. You don't have to let it to, you don't have to get, get to the point where you think it's overtaking you because that comes from fear but you can take a little bit out of that and a little bit out of that you can take the reggae music you can take the food you can take um what else was there i was gonna say the clothes some of the clothes you know what i mean you can take the best out of both worlds we can we can um benefit from what england has to offer like i said i love a shepherd's pie i love pie and mash i love a sunday roast but you can, we can actually benefit from each other. You know what I mean? But we don't have to be usurped by another person's culture or feel fear, feared by it. But anyway, I just thought I'd put my two cents worth in. I think, you know, as, as soon as we recognise that we're all in this together, we are really. And as one section goes down, the whole of us go down. So we need to build each other up. And we need to build a better world and not create hostility and division. It's not worth it. Anyway, that's my rant. I hope my eyes are better this evening so I can take my glasses off. Have a good day. Bye bye.